Welcome back to this the live Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. With me, I have Professor David Awurawo, Professor of International Relations and Strategic Studies at the University of Lagos. We have Shitu, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, who has been on the program with me earlier, and now Yemi Adamolekun, Executive Director Enough is Enough. Well, before you joined us, Professor Awurawo and Yemi Adamolekun, we've been looking at the election process, collation and announcement of results in Kogi, Imo, and uh, Baesa states. We understand that in Kogi state, the collation and announcement of results has been suspended and will resume at 7 p.m. And in Baesa, as Uvietime judge reported, will resume at 6 p.m. And Arise News will continue to cover that. But for now, what we have seen, as uh, discussed previously by Wahab Shitu SAN, is uh, reports of voter apathy, lessons not being learned. Well, those who are aggrieved will have to go to court, <laughs> he argued, <laughs> who have to provide the proof. It's not on the basis of uh, sentiment and it's not on the basis of uh, just uh, emotional opinion. Mm -hmm. But in any case, you know, this is what we've been covering all day, of cycle elections in Nigeria. Let me start with you, uh, Professor Awurawo. Well, um, it is clear that um, the elections have followed virtually the same pattern as previous elections. Uh, the ills that have always bedeviled elections in Nigeria have manifested themselves in this current uh, office in election. Uh, violence. Uh, by the way, um, Mr. Ashitu said uh, they have to provide evidence. Uh, I don't agree with him. The evidence is there. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria. No, 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 no. I mean, he will ask for evidence. What, what is clear is clear. I mean, uh, what is clear is clear. No, I mean, not uh, here, too. He says, no, no, not here, sir. I mean, this, uh, an INEC official was kidnapped and later really, I mean, uh, uh, released. And that one is, I mean. No, it's, it's clear, but the truth of the matter is, and it's, it's we worth... We have to prove it. If, that's the point. Uh, yes. And that's, I think that's the point Mr. Oh, Shitu okay. is making. That's the point yeah. I agree it doesn't matter. Even if it is to the, to, to the effect that, oh, uh, does he exist? Or maybe there is skepticism regarding. Well, it's not sufficient, uh -huh. and that's his point. It's not in sufficient. In court, yes, to you have to prove it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So all of those uh, things have, uh, you know, characterized the election. Uh, we understand the one in Imo has been uh, concluded uh, virtually, uh, but Kogi and Baesa are still ongoing. Um, we, we we need to. I mean, I don't know what is left to be done for Nigerians not to see election as do or die. Uh, we have seen it manifest itself virtually all the aspects of the election from you know uh, before even before from the campaigns to you know developments today uh, Nigeria needs to you know take sit back let's look at ourselves as we continue in this trajectory Why it, not? Does, it doesn't speak well of us um, <laughs> the other side to it is uh, that uh, even though the uh, presidential uh, uh, election tribunal and uh, the Supreme Court the comments regarding electronic transmission of results that, okay, INEC has the discretion. Uh, yes, INEC has its discretion, but INEC has to transmit elections electronically from uh, the polling booths because it does a lot in establishing the credibility of the election and make the results acceptable. So whereas the other discretion, the discretion will be exercised towards, you know, uh, transmitting elections from the polling booths so that the results are known almost as the elections are, you know, uh, uh, the votes are cast, which is the direction that we, you know, we should be, we should be going. Uh, these are the issues. Uh, there shouldn't be this extreme position regarding, oh, I must win. And that is what is, you know, influencing all of this. Uh, this tendency towards uh, the politics of the belly, uh, where, and of course, where people who are professional politicians, I mean, people should not be professional politicians. You should have something else. <laughs> If you go and contest an election and you lose, you go back to you know uh, your vocation or your what what you are what you are trained to do. But what we have in Nigeria is we have a crop of people who are professional politicians, so they must win elections at all cost. That is bad, and the number is the number is large. We have a large number of people when they lose election they go to Abuja to hang around National Assembly to see what you know all their lives revolve around the election. That should not be, and that, that is one of the things that is you know making election look like do or die in Nigeria. And these are things that must change for elections to be far more credible than what we have now. Well, Yemi Adam Olekun, you are a strong member of the civil society space in Nigeria. And uh, 
the civil society uh, situation room. Mm. We were talking to Dr. YZ Yahoo mm. the other day on another program, The Morning Show, and he said the uh, you know uh, situation room had deployed hundreds of persons mm. to observe these elections. What are the feelers that you are getting in terms of the performance of the security agencies, the performance of the uh, of INEC itself, and the conduct of the political parties? I think. Um, so there was a, a statement issued yesterday afternoon, and so those were some of the issues. Vote buying that ranged from 1,000 naira to 30,000. I'm still trying to understand the context of the 30,000. Um, security agencies being compromised, INEC officials being compromised, even for INEC having come out to admit that late arrival of materials in some places, which we know. I mean, so I think not to just repeat the same issues. The issues are there. Not the, none of them have changed. And to Professor Awara's point, I think my question will be, why should anything change? Like, what's the incentive for us to play this game any differently? Absolutely none. The judiciary affirms the game as it is being played. The players, um, as you rightly said, in, uh, what's it called? In owning, in, in be having power and wanting to keep power and playing this do or die, uh, as, as OBJ famously called it, that's what we have created. And there's no incentive to shift from that. So I really don't, to be honest, I don't know, I actually have no energy to do any analysis on this election because there's no reason. It's true because I'm not sure why we expected it to turn out any differently. And so, and then you take, let me use classic IREV. What the IRF was supposed to do, to Professor Awarawa's point, is not electronic transmission of results because we don't do that. It's just that there's a result sheet. Take a picture of it. So there's, in a sense, a, a backup that everybody has access to. So when you get to the collation center and they're reading numbers, if it doesn't align with the picture you took at the polling unit, you have a grounds for dispute. But the Supreme Court has told us that that is completely irrelevant. So if it's irrelevant, why are we blaming our next staff who don't do it? Or as the Labour candidates, uh, even though the INEC chairman and the rest of, his, uh, of, of the commission have said they would do it, the qu larger question is, you, yes, you say you will do it, but the Supreme Court has said it is meaningless. So what is then the point? Or as the Labour, candidate, uh, Labour Party candidate for IMO said, even if INEC tried by waiting till the last minute to deploy people so that maybe you don't know who it is you want to compromise the morning of the election. They now deploy you to a, to a ward or a polling unit and you see police, army, SSS working for the ruling party, i.e. APC. You, as an INEC staff, you just say, you know what, this is not that deep. I want to leave. Shortless of the fact that you can take, say you don't want to do the job and leave, if you stay there for your own safety, you will just mind your business. Maybe you'll document it for the future. But I guess my larger point is that the systems and the processes have been compromised and are being manipulated. And yet we say that elections are the core of a democracy. So if we don't allow people to vote freely and safely in what we say is the core of the system of government, why do we expect different outcomes? And I'm just... Anna. Okay, before we move on to other subjects, uh, uh, Wab Shitu SAN, Professor Awura who was calling you out, saying, <laughs> when certain things are clear, they are clear, they don't need to be proven, <laughs> which is, well, under the principle, the thing speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. And that the cosmos know that when something speaks for itself, they should not be asking for proof. No. It doesn't work that way. That is not the way the judiciary functions. Judas functions on the basis of facts as pleaded, as adduced, and uh, on the basis of proof. Uh, I'm not sure Professor Awara uh, would, would like to co uh, come to court to give evidence. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, because, uh, and this is... And I'm speaking, <laughs> and, and I'm speaking very seriously. No <laughs> decent person who come on air to legitimize irregularities. No decent person will say, oh, will come and speak in favor of rigging of elections. But you see, and uh, we, we must appreciate the fact that it is not the primary duty of the judges to determine the outcome of elections. It shouldn't be, but we've it shouldn't it, be. But we made it. <laughs> but when, when you say you are grieved, about the process, about the outcome, then you must go extra mile 
to document your evidence and be prepared to present it the way it has been prescribed Quite by law. true, and I agree with you, Mr. Yes. Chitu. But yes. my point is that we've yes. also seen, I'm not a lawyer, but <laughs> and unfortunately none come to mind readily. Yes, yes. But we've also seen cases where judges, in the interest of justice, mm -hmm. Dr. Abati and I had this conversation one of maybe two episodes ago where we where he was trying to make the case that the law is the primary client, quote unquote, of the judiciary. And I beg to disagree. Because we've seen that over and over again in Nigeria, where only where not only do the judges contravene the law as written, yeah. but in and so and then that's one part of it. And then the second part is the heavy focus on technicalities. If the object is justice and understanding the context, understanding the climate, there are judgments that have been given and can be given. That's not necessarily because you gave me evidence A, B, C, D. But the judge, in his wisdom, as we would like to say, when, it is, when we appreciate the thought-outness of the judgment, we will say the judge, okay, why am I speaking like a lawyer? I'm not a lawyer, again, let me say that. But they will say the judge, in his wisdom, said X, B, 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 B. So I, I think while like, I hear what you're saying, but I'm also, I hear what Professor Wara was saying, is that there are some contexts where if the overriding objective of the judiciary, which it should be, in my opinion, is not the technicalities of the law, but injustice for a situation, then we should focus on justice. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Let me, just, let, let me just clarify this. Okay. okay. Judiciary works on the basis of justice according to law. Well, I, like, I like that. According I like, to I like law. Like now, that. for instance, you are expected to present your petition yes. 21 days after the declaration of results. Yes. That is the law. Now, if you have proven evidence of reggae in, in, in a particular situation, and you, you, have, you, presented your, you are presenting your petition 25 days, after the declaration of results. You, you sort yourself out. You sort yourself out. The second yeah, issue is this. The second scenario is all of us witness murder being committed here, for example. If murder is committed here, mm. all of us witness it. And now the person who committed the murder is, is brought to trial. Mm. And none of us are presented. Are re re is ready. None of us is ready to go and give to evidence. Give evidence, okay. You want the Judas. To now manufacture no, evidence. No, no, no. Of course. No, no. I mean, I mean. So well, that, that's what we are saying. No, no, no. If, if, if there are proven cases of malpractices, document it and be ready to volunteer evidence. Okay, okay. very quickly, I want to take, I want <laughs> to take a, an additional topic. <laughs> I want well, you also agree with you. Yeah, you can say the judge in his wisdom. <laughs> yeah. I like that phrase. It's very nice. The judge in his wisdom. <laughs> I want to take. Um, a topic just for about three minutes because we also have a guest uh, who is waiting. The National Industrial Court has restrained the Nigerian Labor Congress, Trade Union Congress, as well as their affiliates from embarking on any strike or industrial action. The unions that after an extraordinary National Executive Council meeting on Tuesday in Abuja declared a total nationwide strike from November 14, 2023. The unions took the decision following the alleged assault on the NLC National President Joe Ajero last week in Imo State. However, the federal government and the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice filed an ex parte application praying the court to stop the unions from embarking on the planned strike. Well, Washib Situ uh, SM, we have you here. Can the National Industrial Court stop the unions from going on strike? The Constitution guarantees the right to uh, freedom of protest. Of course. The Constitution guarantees the right of freedom of protest. And of course, protest is also leg legitimate in a democratic setting. But where there is a court order uh, central to the democratic tradition is also respect for the independence, for, for the rule of law. Where there is a court order, if you don't, if, if you now want to go ahead to protest in spite of the court order, you must take steps to set aside the order. We cannot build our democracy by disrespecting orders of court of competent jurisdiction. I think the way to resolve this issue, in my view, is that those who orchestrated the attack on the NSC president should be fished out, prosecuted, and dealt with according to law. But I don't think we should use that as incidents 
to disrupt the entire process of governance throughout the country. If you want government to deliver good governance, then incessant strikes will derail the process. Uh, uh, we derail the process, and I think we can embark on constructive you know, dialogue with government on some of these issues. Because at the end of the day, we're suffering. The citizens are suffering. For, uh, and they bear the brunt of these strikes. When, when you withdraw services, flights you can, in and out of uh, you know, Imo, a lot of people will suffer, not just the government. So I think that is, we should, the way out is constructive dialogue in order to resolve some of these issues. Okay, very briefly, mm -hmm. Professor Awurawo, before we take yeah, a break. Um, I agree with uh, Mr. Shitu. Um, there has to be dialogue to resolve this. Uh, Minister of Labor has to come in and, you know, this thing can be resolved uh, through dialogue. But uh, in addition to that, I want to make an addendum. The industrial cost seems to be too quick, eager, <laughs> with alacrity. <laughs> Has he ever even ruled against the government? That I can't remember at any time in recent memory. Well, so what does that cost? What does it stand for? Just to say you can't go on strike. <laughs> so that is another dimension. To it. The court needs to take a look at itself, the way it operates. You know, while we, while we advocate dialogue as a way of resolving this matter, the industrial court needs to take a look at itself before people begin to disobey and embarrass the courts by the way it carries on. Everything government takes there, they just rules in favor of government. Every, as if it's another arm. I mean, a government, uh, an arm of the executive. To just every, I can't remember any judgment in recent memory where the industrial court says, oh, no, no, government, you can't, the people have a right to, you know, to go to court. So the court needs to look, take a look at itself while we advocate dialogue to resolve this problem. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, the court stopped NLC as an institution, but it can't stop individuals. So if individual members of NLC decide through whatever means that they want to go on strike, hey, that's that. But I think the, the point that Mr. Shito made, which I agree with, is that we can't build our democracy on disrespect of the rule of law, but it's on both sides, because the government is just as guilty. So when you have a government that is comfortable breaking orders from the, the executive arm, i.e. disobeying, contradicting, or ignoring um, judgments from the judiciary, then it lets credence for others, for others to do the same. But in addition to NLC and TUC, another thing that the government needs to be very mindful of is the possibility of ASU going on strike, given the fact that they are literally trying to paralyze tertiary education in Nigeria um, with this new deduction of 40%. It just makes absolute no sense. Absolute no sense. Give the universities their autonomy so they can function and we can actually build world-class universities like we used to have. Well, thank you very much, Yemi Adamalakun. Wahab Shitu SAN. I'm Professor David Aurawo. On that note,